this day. More importantly, it's the beginning of the new month. Let me um, make that a bit, make me a bit bigger. Uh, and um, uh, hold on a minute. Am I sharing that screen? What can you see? Um, and you can see my slides, can't you? I've done that wrong, haven't I? Oh, well, never mind. Uh, let me move me down a bit and bring me back. So there we are. There we are. Hopefully you can see me now. Uh, you can't see me, uh, unfortunately, uh, before I go to webinar um, members. But thank you, guys. Thanks for joining us. Um, this it, is live on YouTube and on Facebook and uh, on many of our other social media platforms. So um, thank you for your time today. It's all about you today, remember, guys. Uh, it's a big day today, Fed Day. Um, <clears throat> Uh, lots of other things going on beforehand. We've had uh, interesting uh, data out of Europe with regard to uh, CPI. We've got uh, ADP. It's Wednesday. That's the private payrolls ahead of the uh, key NFP on Friday. Uh, so lots going on. We've had uh, lots of movements yesterday. Uh, gold moved a cent and a half. It was all the way down to 1900 at one point, or under 1900 and then rallied $30. So end of month machinations as well going on. So uh, all sorts going on. So uh, let's uh, run through the slides before we bring the uh, chart up um, in a minute. So uh, welcome, everyone, and uh, hope you're all well and staying safe. So let me just get my slides moving. Where my, where's my slides gone? Uh, where are my slides? There we are. Um, there's a disclaimer. Uh, trading uh, is risky. Emma, good afternoon. Uh, 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 Dow, S&P, have had a good move. S&P had its best um, best month for a long time, 6%. Best month since uh, nine, 2019. Mohammed, good afternoon to you, sir. Well, let's uh, run through some of these today. Gold really sliding sideways today, Mohammed. It's rallied up, and you can see it's sideways, but uh, we'll see where we go from there. Big volatile yesterday. Uh, hopefully, you were on the right side of that move. Big move down, and then a big rally up as well into 1900 support yesterday. For gold traders so yeah trading is risky guys uh, make sure you understand what's going on watch my webinar um how to improve your trading mindset because this business as i've just been chatting with the volume is down says kingsley so you can't hear anybody else on facebook sorry not on facebook on you on go to webinar can't hear me very well kingsley is saying the volume is down let me just check that for your um Looks okay on here, I think. Where, where um, so look at the audio. Um, I checked it before we started. It's definitely coming. It's coming through the camera, so it might not be as good as it is as normally. Um, but let me just check. No, it looks okay here. Um, um, it seems okay. Oh, I say it is. A, it is quite low though. Um, okay, I'll try and speak up a bit more loudly. Uh, I don't know why that is the case. Um, um, perhaps it's hit by something, but uh, anyway, I'll try and speak more loudly than I normally speak, uh, Kingsley. I hope you can still hear me. It's all about the charts, really. it's not about what I say today, isn't it? Anyway, uh, so let's um, let's crack on. Um, so uh, there's me. You don't want to look at me. So today we're going to look at obviously the upcoming data. T today is probably one of the best uh, key days. Um, Your audio now, it looks okay. Is, is it so low, uh, Kingsley, that you can't hear me? Um, I'll just have to speak up louder. Uh, please, I can't hear you, says Emmanuel. Okay, so you can't hear me all, guys. Uh, I know, so let me just uh, check if that's the case. Um, hmm? What do you mean? To what? Uh, headset. Tools it will get might get to. Um, let me see if that's working now. Is that any better, guys? Uh, and you guys on Facebook, can you still hear me? Okay, because I think it's might have. Um, um, we can hear you on YouTube. Uh, Songs there isn't any conflict now because I think there's two microphones open at the moment. So if it starts getting noisy on uh, uh, YouTube, we can hear you clear. We can hear you clear. Right. Hopefully everybody now it's better. Now it's but right. Everybody can hear me as long as there isn't any um, background noise. All right. So it's all about you guys today. I'm going to come to your uh, requests, um, guys, on YouTube and Facebook in a minute. Uh, let me just run through uh, the slides because it's um, I say it's a key week. 
Um, uh, today I should have brought in the rest. I should have used yesterday, um, yesterday's and Mondays as well, because it was the end of the month. So we had this sort of round rounding up of uh, positions, a bit of volatility, or quite a lot of volatility yesterday. If you were in the market yesterday, um, today new month starts. We got a full four weeks of uh, February to get through. But the big surprise this morning uh, was this uh, reduction in, in headline inflation in the euro area. Not a surprise, but in. Um, that it stepped down so much, so it's definitely cooling there. However, uh, the key number uh, that uh, sort of uh, has brought questions to, you know, how aggressive might the uh, ECB be over the next few meetings was this core number rising. Uh, a bit of a surprise, it was expected to cool, it hasn't. Um, uh, it stayed the same as it was uh, last month, it was expected to go down by one tick, it didn't. Later this afternoon, we got the key private payrolls number, the ADP, uh, the private payrolls number, always two days ahead of the non-farm payroll, the full number itself is much more in line with NFP now. Now they're recalculated. They took it away for a couple of months and recalculated it, and it's much more in line. As you can see, 178,000 new jobs in the private sector are expected from ADP uh, this afternoon, down from the 235,000. So it is cooling, and that's a significant cooling. Uh, but non-farm payrolls, uh, some analysts and the one I was reading yesterday is talking about about 170,000, uh, <clears> excuse me, on Friday's number. Uh, the really important manufacturing PMI number from the ISM is also this afternoon. And uh, obviously tonight is the big one. Uh, expected 25 basis point hike from the Fed. Uh, that's virtually, that's all of nailed on as these things are, um, are as they can be um, going uh, with these things. But um, <clears throat> The issue now is are they going to go another 25 basis points in March and call that a deal? We get to 5%. Uh, will they not do the 25 basis points? There's even some rumours they might do the, a, a full 50 basis points today. I can't see that really happening, but uh, there's still a, a one, or, you know, less than a 1% chance of that actually happening. Leonard's now saying he can't hear me clearly. Right, anybody on YouTube that, has the audio got a bit distorted in the last few minutes? Uh, Len is the only one that's saying he can't hear me very well. Um, everybody else has been saying it was okay, but anyway, let's uh, let's keep uh, let's keep trying. Everyone, uh, go to webinar and say it's okay. Um, and the volume, I've checked it, and now it's okay, guys. So thanks for your time. So uh, yeah, no requests on go to webinar yet for any particular assets. We'll get to the assets shortly. But I say the Fed is, you know, when the Fed meet, when the Fed announce, it's probably the most uh, important event, uh, more so than non-farm payrolls uh, from the long-term fundamental decision. So the issue now is the markets are expecting uh, interest rates to top at 5% in the United States. So coming in March, will they actually get there though? Will they cool it by point one of 1%, 10%? Will it not go uh, to the full 5%? The, mar the market is still thinking that they will do that. And it, the issue now is the longevity of how uh, long um, the rates are going to remain at 5% uh, for the cool towards the end of the year. Uh, if inflation continues to decline, uh, as it has done, but certainly the headline, um, significantly, that might come in uh, and they, you know, they might start looking to raise rates into the first quarter of 2024. Some people are even talking about 2023. I personally can't see that happening because Historically, inflation tends to hang around. It's a bit sticky, and it does hang around many, longer than many expect. It can go up, like with lots of things. It can go up very quickly. Or in this case, it actually ground up, didn't it? Because they were talking about transition for a long while, of inflation being transitory uh, before it peaked at 9.5% last June. Uh, tomorrow, just as important for sterling traders and euro traders, we've got the ECB and the Bank of England, both of those uh, central banks expected to go up by a full 50 basis points. The Bank of England might, was chatted they might only cool to 25 basis points, but it's looking like Bank of England also 50 basis points. ECB 50 basis points. That's tightening up the screw, making borrowing more expensive. Uh, mortgages in the UK, lots of people on variable rate mortgage in the UK um, um, and loans, variable rates, uh, you know, all of that getting more expensive. The energy costs still. As well, you know, we still got February, March, and April. Even April can be a bit iffy for your heating costs in North and Northern Europe. So, still a long way to go to get right through winter. So, energy costs still biting very significantly in the Eurozone area and in the UK as well. So, the energy crisis continues, the cost of living crisis uh, continues. And then a big one on Friday 
uh, North Farm payroll, 223,000 last time. It's likely to cool to around 180, 170,000, but more on that. Uh, we'll be live also for that um, event on Friday, so do join us for that as well. So a huge, huge week, and it's rounded off by the services PMI data out of the United States, a very key uh, piece of data. Services sector, much, much, much more significant than the manufacturing sector. The ISM, the most significant of the uh, institutions that record this type of data. Remember, PMI is the pre um, um, <laughs> Purchasing Managers Institute. My brain went blank for a while. Okay, so lots of you asking for uh, assets. We'll get onto that uh, right away. Again, guys, nobody on um, go to webinar, but feel free. Don't be scared. Don't be shy. It's all about you, uh, these sessions. So uh, the very best of luck. Next week, uh, much cooler, much quieter. These are the big, big red impact events. Remember the big red numbers. Uh, second week of uh, February, full first week, but second week really. RBA is probably top of the shop uh, on uh, on Friday at the end of the month uh, with their uh, statement uh, announcement on Tuesday. Uh, but the uh, statement uh, follows up on Friday, so Tuesday, 7th of February, uh, RBA uh, again likely to uh, raise rates. Um, inflation there spiked up again, so um, um, they were looking to ease things perhaps in Australia earlier, but. Uh, they're moving ahead, unlike the, uh, remember the Bank of Canada uh, talked about they've reached their peak uh, and talking about um, a, a period of adjustment coming forward. So it looks like the uh, Bank of Canada have already topped out. Um, the Fed might be next, uh, but the uh, ECB, RBA and others and Bank of England certainly got some more rate hikes uh, to go before they reach their plateau by the looks of things. So, uh, lots going on, so uh, let's have a look at what you want to have a look at, uh, and uh, let's have a look who was first up. Nothing in my friends on uh, right. Langer's asking about uh, gold. A couple of you on YouTube have asked about gold, of course. We'll have a look at gold. Um, can you add a live web on Friday? Says Pereira. Yes, Pereira will be live on Friday for the uh, non-farm payroll event. Uh, so join us then. Uh, not at this time, but uh, a couple of minutes before the data comes out. On Friday, so let's just do this in order. Um, first up was Emma and her uh, Dow and S&P four-hour charts. So let's have a look at the charts. I'm using white charts today. If anybody wants different, let me know. Uh, my default black charts, but uh, uh, the Dow. Where's the Dow gone? Um, uh, USA 30 four-hour. There we are. So uh, the Dow on the four-hour chart here. Earlier in the week, we got up to this 34,300 level here on um, on Monday and topped out. So we've had a, a strong week breaking out of this sort of level through here, around about the 32,300 level. Rallied up, uh, topped out at this uh, 34,300 level. Now we've moved. Now we moved down significantly. Um, yes, our weekly low uh, was back through this support. Oh, sorry. Put that, change the colour of that line. Sorry, you can't see that, can you? Uh, let me make that a bright blue one so you can see it, hopefully. Okay, so that's our low uh, on uh, on Monday. We're down here to 32,932. Uh, packed our low. We moved into our uh, upper uh, side of the Bollinger Band here yesterday. And we've held it. All of yesterday, a nice rally yesterday, but again into this resistance at 34,165. That was from last week as, I, as we were moving up. So that's our sort of channel we'd been in last week when we were um, talking about this. So we broke out of that and moved lower. Uh, so what's happened since? Well, we've rallied up. Uh, we moved down into the bottom half of the Bollinger Band and our four and now that's our low from yesterday, but our <clears throat> to, so far... Uh, today uh, and going forward is the uh, four hour, sorry, uh, 200 period moving average at 33,468. So call it 33,470 is the key support today. Uh, we've tested that area and then bounced off. So we've rallied up into the upper half of the Bollinger Band, but we don't want to get, or we haven't got any higher here on the Dow ahead of the Fed. So our high today is below our high of yesterday okay which is in turn below our high of monday so you know 
it's not much, but we are getting lower, aren't we? The lows, though, are also moving up, okay, from our low here on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So a bit of a wedge forming. Are we going to break out to the upside? Well, if we are, we need to break this zone here, Emma. We need to break through 34,170, uh, call it, and then 34,325 uh, is the big up line we need to break through to, if this is going to break out to the upside. First target to the upside is the top of the Bollinger Band, which is at 34,117. Then that line at 34,170 and then 34,325 to the upside if this is going to break out and move higher on the four-hour time frame because we're still sort of biased to the upside. If we look at the daily chart, um, we've been with big rally here through um, um, through uh, October, November, up and then we went down for December and it's a bit more volatile. The Dow was only up about a few percentage points compared to the other two uh uh, markets uh, for close of uh, January. I think there's lots. Let me just check that up from that low to the high. Yeah, three percent, and that. Isn't, but the opening was less, wasn't that? Was a low to the high. So the open on was only yeah about less than two percent the rally in the Dow compared to you know big rally we had in the Nasdaq. Um, so. Um, um where was i yeah so that's so we're biased to the upside still we're in the upper half of the bollinger band on the daily time frame there's a 50-day moving average uh coalescing with the 20-day moving average so we're in the upper half of the bollinger band for this last half of january so still biased to the upside whether that's going to last or not is obviously what a lot of the uh discussion is about but four hour trade certainly also biased higher they're the late levels to look forward to uh, the big support is at 33, uh, 4, uh, 70. And obviously, any surprises from the Fed today will go and test these lows from last week and on Monday when we went to 32, uh, 935. So 32,900 uh, to the downside. And that low here last week took us uh, under 32,500, didn't it? So they're yeah, the levels to be looking at. And the four hour time frame, uh, Emma, uh, as far as the SP 500, very similar um, setup. Uh, where's my uh, 500? Uh, should be that's the, this the futures uh, 500. Much more of a, a oops, um, much more of a bullish move. This is the daily time frame. Much more of a bullish move, but we're rejecting the key uh, 4,100 level. 4,100 uh, is the key level to for this to go higher. But as you can see. Um, again, I think we said this last last, last time, didn't we? We opened um, sort of down here. We've had a, a stronger run, um, five percent. Six. Uh, the, the cash market was up six point two percent. The S and P uh, fifty. The futures are up uh, just under six um, percent. So it's biased to the upside. It's in the upper half of the Bollinger Band again. Uh, needs to break uh, four thousand one hundred. That's you know, it's just eight points shy of it. <laughs> but 4,100 is the key resistance level to the upside. So we're down today. Uh, four hour remains biased to the upside of that shook out. Um, and again, just like the uh, the Dow, these four hour candles, uh, the lows continue to get higher. The highs are continuing to get higher. But we do really, really, really need uh, to break that. Um, um, that should be. Make sure that's. Oh, I don't know where that is actually. Which one that is? Is that the fourth? That, yeah. Let's make that. Let's round that up to four thousand one hundred. That's the big, big psychological line in the sand uh, for the uh, S and P, both the cash market and the uh, futures market. You can see there's the big end of day close. We are on a breach four thousand one hundred. We haven't done that in this uh, last rally. If we zoom this in, it's the daily. Remember, zoom this. Oh, no, it's a four hour, sorry. If I zoom this in, you see that the down, you know, we declined all of 2022, uh, but we retraced quite significantly. So here we've retraced. If I zoom this up, sorry, no. So if we, we the, the, the rally here, October to um, to November high, took us to the 4,100, rejected it, uh, rejected it there. We broke through and rallied up higher here in, uh, in the summer, but rejected it here back in the early summer. Um, and the 200 provided the resistance, 200, just a day or two, we were over it, not over it. But this time, we've broken the 200 quite significantly, um, but we're rallying, and now it becomes the horizontal. See how the 200 has come down? 
So it's the horizontal resistance at the psychological 4,100 again we've ran into. So we've tested it here, as you can see, for one, two, three, four days now. Uh, is that going to hold again? It has before. We'll see. Uh, but at the moment, we're still in an uptrend. Uh, the daily support sits at the midline of the Bollinger Band there at 39, uh, 3,996, so virtually the round number of 4,000 again. So there's 100 pips, 100 points uh, to give away on the uh, on the S&P 500. On your four-hour time frames, Emma, uh, it's it's you know it's uh, it was long uh, hit there, went short here into the bottom end of the Bollinger Band, and it's rallied since then. So the support immediately for the um, uh, S&P 500 uh, futures is at 4,060, where the 20 period moving average is. Uh, the 50 period moving average is at 4,033. And the bottom half of the Bollinger Band is now flattening at um, 10 points lower at 4,021. So there are your support areas. Uh, resistance, as I said, top end of the Bollinger Band, which is now banging right into that big fat 4,100. So watch that later on today. Uh, remember, the Fed announced uh, that in the middle of the uh, US trading day. So uh, um, see what happens there. We'll see a bit of that one would expect uh, a bit of a wait and see until the Fed numbers come out. OK, Mohammed's asking about, um, about gold today. As I said earlier, gold had a bit of a rip roaring day. Yes, we've got out the one hour time frame here, Mohammed. I don't know. If, how many of you were trading gold yesterday, whether you're on wherever you are? Uh, go to webinar, Facebook, YouTube. Tell me who was trading gold yesterday. Because it was a rip roaring day yesterday. Lots of volatility uh, to the upside. Um, uh, Derek, we'll get to WTI. Don't worry, my friend. I know it's uh, seem a long way away, but there's lots of questions coming in on YouTube. Uh, but anyway, let's go back to gold. So gold is consolidated. Let's go back to the higher time frame, Mohammed. I don't know. What, again, I can't remember what time frame you trade this uh, on. But tr gold remains bid, as, as we've said many times. The big break was this fourth of fourth um, of November. Uh, huge, huge engulfing candle, breaking the downtrend, closing over the uh, twenty-day moving average, closing over the fifty-day. Moving average, and it hasn't really looked back since, has it? Stalled at the 200-day at the, uh, moving average at the big psychological 1800 level, uh, and then it, you know, and sideways there, unex not unexpectedly, then rallied. It burst through the 1850, it burst through 1900, and now it's running out of steam as it's got to 1950. 1949 is the technical uh, high. It didn't actually get to 1950. Uh, but it's still bid. But what's happened now, like it did when we got through the 200-day moving average and the psychological 1800, we're now stalling and consolidating between 1850 and 1920. They're the two level ranges of the uh, the sort of for, for over a week now. So if we zoom this in, you can see we we tested it, re retraced from it. So one day banged into it, and then. Couldn't hold over it this following day. Declined for two further days and then broke through it significantly uh, on the fourth day here. So since then, we've done the same thing as we've got into 18, um, uh, sorry, 1950. So it still remains bid, uh, but now the support is coming up closer to us. So the support now, the 20-day moving average now sits above 1900 at 1908. So 1908 is where the 20-day moving average sits. And it's provided great support for this three-month rally, but a three, you know a three-month rally is a three-month rally. Um, you know it's it's getting it's getting a bit long in the tooth. Uh, so could it unwind? Well, too early to tell yet as an end-of-day trader. Uh, a four-hour trader is also really a bit too early to tell. It's sort of running out of steam. You can see it more so here on the four-hour time frame. So the the angle of ascent has cooled. See how the angle of ascent has cooled, but there's been some nice volatility, some nice pinches there on the on the Bollinger Band as it's gone up. It's pinched again. It's run up but again. See how it's ran into the, didn't quite get to uh, 1950 and it's bounced off and moved down. So yesterday we went down to test this 1900 level again. Clearly buyers down there. Clearly didn't want to go lower and then we bounced up. So some fundamental, some surprise noise um, pulled the dollar up, pulled the gold down but we rallied back. But really you know, as you can see here, we're sort of uh, through this channel now, through this 
you know, split, splitting our daily um, uh, levels. The, the, the support sits at 1920 and the resistance is at uh, 1950. Halfway th uh, between that is uh, 1935, isn't it? And that's exactly where you can see here on the four hour chart how the price is pivoting through that midline there at 1935. Okay, uh, again, so intraday, uh, big move down uh, yesterday, uh, retraced. Uh, significantly here, broke back up at uh, four o'clock, rallied into the 200 hour, and then we've been sideways ever since. So on an intraday basis, the 200 hour sits there at where we literally are at the moment at this 1929 level. So a break above that will push this Bollinger Band up uh, to the upside. But that's not very, to be honest, that's not very likely to be had. Nobody's going to be taking big positions ahead of the Fed. Uh, particularly later today, so be careful trading it today, Mohammed. There are the levels to watch. Uh, where we are now, uh, 19, uh, 2019, obviously the 1935 level I mentioned earlier, and then the 18, 19, oh, really, you know, on an intraday basis, it's lower than that, isn't it? It's that 1948 rather than the 1950 level um, to the upside. Mohammed, good afternoon to you. Hope you're well. Um, Thibault, um, uh, good afternoon to you. Sorry, I kept knocking my candles. Good afternoon. Hi, Kim. Hello. Uh, Amy, how long does it take to verify documents? It shouldn't be very. It shouldn't be long at all. Uh, if you're having problems, email uh, support at hfm.com uh, and uh, they'll get back to you straight away. How long have they been in there? How many? Um, let me know. I'll see if I shake things up for you. Right, good afternoon. Uh, hello. We can hear. Is that saying we can hear you? Ah, good. That was three four, isn't it? Sorry, these are very. Uh, some of these are old. Emma saying she can hear me. It's, ah, right. It takes. It certainly shouldn't take. Yes, yeah, it certainly should take less than two days. Uh, so everybody's saying they can hear me. They can hear me. Uh, Mr. Deck is saying he can hear me. Leonard, I don't know if Leonard's still there. Leonard, are you still around? Can you hear me now? Let me know. Anyway, Michael is next one. He's asking about the pound against the yen and the pound against the U.S. dollar. So uh, the guppy, uh, where's my guppy? Uh, pound. Where is that pound? Why isn't it on here? Hmm. Uh, let's just do uh, a new chart. Uh, Pound, pound, pound. Um, not one. Oh, sorry. These things. There we are. Uh, template. What's the template we're using? Let's use this live one. There we are. Uh, pound, yen. Sorry about that. Uh, Michael, um, let's have a look. So uh, that looks down on the uh, four hour. The daily is also down. Uh, we've got a set 170, wasn't it? Wow, what a rally that was. Um, up there, uh, 170. Uh, 170 uh, back in December. So we've been uh, under in the under half of the Bollinger Band uh, for December, most uh, half of January are on the on the half following about how we ticked up but again another one that doesn't want to move higher. Huge amount of congestion through this zone here. Sorry, that was so small, wasn't it? So you can see here. Uh, well, let me just get that. Out. Here you can see the congestion of the of the moving average. So the brown line is the 200 uh, day moving average. Um, the the uh, dark blue line is a 50-day moving average, and the um, um, top of the Bollinger Band, obviously the green line, there's con you know it's all in this very very constricted uh, 160. Uh, sorry, 63 level. 163 uh, is the big uh, resistance level. Uh, so uh, 162.80, we can actually pull that down a wee bit. Top of the Bollinger Band today, as we start February, is at a 162 level. So if we zoom down the time frames. Um, sorry, that's the higher resistance, but the price action, price action itself 
hasn't got over 162. It's topped out. Oh, you can see that uh, in January at 161.70. So that becomes a key level. Also, let me just put that as our um, uh, made that a bit thicker so you can see that. Okay, so that's that 162. Uh, sorry, 161.70, and that's our 160. Oh, I'll call it 63 level uh, on the daily time frame. Okay, so 163. So I come back and I want. 161, that's our daily resistance, 161.70. So 161.70 is our daily resistance thus far. Okay, so signal line here on the MACD is starting to tick up and it has done from the middle of uh, middle of January from these lows down here. So that's our resistance. Our low for January was down here at uh, 156. See that 155.91, we call it 156 to round. So that's the range really we've been in the major range we've been in for uh, january and the second half of uh, uh december as well so that's where we want to break out 17170 is the top um 156 is our floor quite a big range obviously at the moment what's happening at the moment well uh so far for uh one two three four five six seven eight nine ten days we've been above our 20 day moving average 161 so our support at the moment on an end of day basis sits uh, down here at uh, 159.70 of the 20 day and then uh, just above 156 at so 156.60 is the bottom of the Bollinger Band amount. So again, a sideways action. So if we drill down into your trading time frames, Michael, I don't know what they are. Um, we can... Um, uh, Langer. Yeah, Langer, don't we, we, we did go, so um, hopefully you've, uh, you, you saw that, my friend. Um, what was it doing? Yeah, so we go down to the four-hour time frame. There's our uh, daily uh, channel here, 161.70, and uh, the, uh, the the one, uh, that was that, that was that, that was that, hang on a minute, what was that number there? What was that 156.09? 156.09, there we are, so it'll be 150, let me make that 156. Um, why is that coming to 60? Oh, it's the top of that's the resistance, isn't it? That's not, so it's our um, so I'm making out that 159.65 is our 200, uh, it's our 20 day moving average 20 SM8 at the moment, and the support is that uh, 159, isn't it? 159. Let's just make it. Uh, Form of high one for six, it should be 56. There we go. So that's our support zoom. So if we go down to the four hour. There's that uh, 5965. That's a 20 day moving average. So that's our support today. Uh, the four hour um, from moving higher, tweaked lower here uh, earlier today, um, or whenever that was yesterday. No, yesterday morning, and it's been tripping lower since big break under the 50 so it's moved down um but you know that 159.65 the 20 day move now is providing support but we're looking to test it aren't we we, we uh, our low in the last candle was lower than the previous low so we are moving up. we're up at the moment but uh that candle still got many hours to run uh it's uh we're, we're only an hour and a half in so we're under the 20 uh, we're under the 20 day and the 50 out uh, sorry we're under the 20 and 50 moving average. We're also under uh, the 200 moving average since we broke lower significant breakdown there yesterday as well. So, so pound yen is moving lower on the four hour, the one hour time frame, more intraday. Again, there's that support, there's that resistance zone. This time on the one hour today has been at uh, 160.65. So 160.65 congestion. Um, the one hour tripped lower uh, at, you know, candle before the four hour did here uh, at uh, three or four o'clock um, yesterday morning moved down lower and yesterday's low uh, 159.91 so 160 is being breached and that's exactly where we're tra uh, trading at the moment so if this is going to go up intraday michael it needs to break above the 160.25 level but then it's got a lot of resistance as you can see here at uh, 160.62 
and then 160.75. So they're the key. That's resistance three, two, and one today. Uh, pivot areas around about this. Actually, the pivot areas probably around about this uh, that area there, 160.25. Uh, but we've tested uh, the lows uh, from earlier today, and the next low. It, well, the next area is 159.82, the bottom of the Bollinger Band. But yesterday's low came in at 159.75. So 159.75 um, is another key round number, 59.75, 59.75. Markets like round numbers. Uh, so um, that's um, 59.75, like zeros and five. Uh, is the low from yesterday could be tested later again today so that's your main support area on a, on a um, sort of intraday basically you see it again another one's biased to the downside as far as cables concerned uh, I can find it where's my cable chart there it is uh, cable remains big, but again, another one that can't really breach the 124 level, uh, Michael, as you can probably see there. It's banged into it. So one, two, three. Let's zoom this up for you on the daily base. See, it's big. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine days, and then it rolled down after, you know, eight day, ninth day was down quite significantly. Tenth day yesterday was down significantly. 123.25, uh, we trade at the moment. That's where we closed out. Uh, the month really. Uh, so again, some very significant levels here on an end of day basis. The cable has support at 122, uh, what's that, 122.27, oh, what's that, 122.70, call it 122.70 for the sake of round numbers. 122.70 is first support. Next support is a 50 day moving average at 121.85. And then the bottom of the Bollinger Band comes in here at a hugely significant 120. 120, one, as you this number here, 120.000 for cable is a big, big psychological number, just as 125 is. We didn't get, there's 125 would be this other dotted line, uh, but we, you know, far from getting to that over, uh, in this rally. But overall, uh, cable remains bid. Uh, but it is certainly looking after running out of steam. If the Bank of England don't move uh, um, uh, um, significantly for this 50 basis points uh, on Thursday, which is what it's a bit of a split story, which is why we've rolled over at 124. Um, so Bank of England playing catch up with the Bank of uh, 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 the Central Bank of America and the Fed. Uh, but um, yeah, that's uh, that's the key levels uh, for sterling. Uh, from a four-hour basis, uh, that ticked lower into the under half of the Bollinger Band earlier in the week again. Again, be careful trading today when uh, the Fed and the big banks are announcing. Uh, but it, again, that's one that, that's been short into the central banks. Uh, if we look at you know these intraday lows, uh, one there's that 122.85 level again, uh, and then below that, that's um, it's sort of ticked off that a wee bit, but resistance for four hour traders sits through here at uh, 123.60. So 123.60 uh, resistance for uh, cable traders to the upside. Uh, 122.85 is that low uh, from earlier this week. And then the December low, sorry, the January low, not the December low, the January low for cable came in at 122.60. OK, uh, four hour trades and then the 200 period moving average sits there at 121.86 for four hour traders. OK, so uh, 122.85, uh, this uh, 122.65, the January, the January low and then the 200 day, uh, sorry, the 200 period there at 121.85. Uh, signal line on the MACD is under the uh, zero line. Um, Instagram's getting longer, uh, so that's you know looks again another one biased to the downside. And on an intraday basis, you know uh, down Monday, down Tuesday, down today. Try to tick up. Uh, it's actually it's moved up quite decently. Uh, signal line trying to tick up, but hasn't broke the zero line yet. Uh, resistance today uh, 123.30, 120. Uh, what's that? 123.37 and then 123.63.50. Uh, so some key resistance to the upside. Support uh, is the midline there, the 20-hour moving average at 123.18. The 
Top of the bottom, Jovance, it's at 1 at 23.04. And then that intraday low yesterday, which we put, caught, showed you on the four hour time frame, is 1.22.85. But the hourly candles haven't closed below the bottom of the Bollinger Band, basically around the 123 level. So 123, a key support uh, for cable for the GUI. Uh, Michael, I hope that's answered your question. Mitsu, hi. Let me have a quick sip of water. Langa, have you got the, uh, will you, uh, hopefully you're still here, Langa, you've got the uh, cable. Uh, I'll say that's, the, if you want it shorter than the hourly time frame, be careful or remember to trade today. We've got the Fed later on, we've got a lot of data still to come, and then we obviously we've got the Bank of England tomorrow and the, and the ECB tomorrow as well. So be careful, could be lots of volatility, uh, in, you know, not real volatility, but the market makers could be starting, you know, messing things around, could move things quite violently. You know, it's sometimes days when stop losses get taken out quite significantly. Um, okay, Jacob, Jacob, I do not understand the marketing aspect. Talk to me, Jacob. I don't know what you mean. Are you talking to me? You're talking to somebody else, Jacob. I don't know what you mean. Uh, Derek, uh, what about WTI? Well, again, another one that's been volatile. We got the OPEC meeting uh, today as well. Where's, where's my oil trade? Here we are. This is US oil, so this is WTI. Uh, and then we've got the daily time frame, it's still sort of drifting. Let me put some, there's no lines on this one. Let me put some key lines on here. So, um, uh, $80 uh, is the, a bit of a line in the sand uh, this week. Let me put some uh, 77 we got down to these lows down here at $70. Let's round those up for next time. Next time we come back, make it nice and simple. So uh, let's make it 80. So this one's 80. This one's uh, 70. Don't use these charts very often, as you can probably tell. Uh, so I'll update them. So uh, that's our floor. $70 we tested uh, in uh, January as we were moving, sorry, in December as we were moving lower. Uh, the uh, January low was took us to a 73 down here, uh, or under 73 was just uh, 73 there. There we go. Uh, so zoom that. But yeah, sorry, uh, the reason I was that. So we were obviously declining here uh, from the summer high, uh, which took us back over $100, $120. So we've been declining uh, for the second half of. Um, of 2022 we rallied here uh october november but couldn't break uh the key 90 well we tested 95 but really 90 90 was the line in the sand again although we were over it significantly for a number of days actually remember uh, that's 90 there uh so we couldn't really hold the 90 dollars but that's a target for many okay uh interestingly now so that's 90 dollars interesting the 200 day moving average is coming down to that level so that's a key resistance level to the upside first before that uh is the 85 zone so we got 80 well 84 zone there top of the Bollinger band then 90 um but more on an intraday basis the bias has been to the downside so there's that test of 70 dollars in um in um december uh january didn't take us that low it got, we got to 73 of our support and then we rallied up Looked like we were going higher, but couldn't break uh, significantly above 82. Here, yeah, there's 82.50, the, the intraday uh, are high. So if we put that side, January high, 82.50 through here, 82.50. I'm just talking in round numbers here. So I'm going to hold me to exact numbers there, 82, 82.50. Bollinger Band high on an M day basis, higher than that. There's that, that uh, 83.70. 8360 and then that's a $90 to the upside. So what's happened? Well, we were moved up and then we ran out of puff again and we come back down, broke the 20 day moving average, but we found support at the 50 day. So support now sits at 77.50. 77.50 is the major um, uh, WTI support, um, Derek there, 77.50. Uh, um, and also, uh, but don't rule out that $73 low uh, in January as well. So that's your support going into February, $77.50. Uh, $80 needs to break, and then $83 need to break to the upside if we're going to look at, um, um, and certainly even, I think it was $82, wasn't it? This didn't, yeah, there we go. 
81.50 really on an end of day basis, uh, the oil market couldn't break a low. So there's some closer uh, levels to be look, looked at as we go forward. Um, again, I don't know what time frame you're trading that, uh, Derek, but uh, do let me know. So $80 pivot area, uh, and re uh, previous resistance area, previous support areas were coming down. Um, we couldn't really hold much over $80 in December. We did better in January, uh, but we couldn't break the 83 level. Uh, but we were biased to the upside in this upper half of the Bollinger Band for most of January. Uh, we're down coming to we're coming down to test it now. So really, that 77.50 is your big support line, uh, and uh, if you want to get a bit more aggressive. Uh, the um, that's the 50-day moving average. A bit more aggressive is where we've sort of been this morning uh, at the 20-day moving average now, which is, sits at 78.60. Okay, but really, let's break $80 and try and hold it again, like we did in um january if we're going to move higher a break of this 7750 will test will bring us back to 73 and then the 71 70 level uh, that we saw uh it, it, admittedly intraday but in uh, in december so uh, we'll see where that goes technically okay obviously politically f uh, fundamentally uh it's usually uh, quite a strong month january for the oil market uh, obviously things in ukraine uh, have an impact things in uh, the gulf have a huge impact um, all sorts of things impact the uh, obviously the oil market and demand for energy, but you know energy tends to be higher uh, in the winter months. So uh, there we go. Um, uh, Protus uh, Euro analysis first person asked for Euro in a long time. Uh, so daily remains um, um, as I've said before remains bid. We're in the upper half of the Bollinger Band 108, the big support level for Euro. 109 is the big resistance level, uh, like we've just seen for the others. But again, on an uh, end of day basis, it's still well bid. Uh, the 108, interestingly, now is below the 20 day moving average. That's only happened in the last couple of days. I, I don't just noticed that. Uh, but we're stalling to try and break 109. So 109.29 was that intraday high uh, during uh, January. Uh, 108.50 is our so, so support area this week. Uh, and then 108. So 108 support, 108.50, and 109 remains uh, the resistance. As far as today's, well, again, be careful trading these ahead of the Fed. There's the 109. We've moved up to test it from this uh, breach of the 108.50 and this test of 108 yesterday. Not yesterday, it wasn't yesterday, it was earlier in the week. Uh, but again, four hours um, a bid here, added to here. 109 needs to break, and that will we test then 109 at 27 on the four hour, the one hour time frame. Again, it's a big move down to test 108 yesterday, very volatile yesterday. But again, as I said, it's the end of uh, the month, so we, uh, you know, tr trust the trend. So there we broke under the 20, went all the way down to 108 uh, from this break up here at 108 to 80. Uh, yesterday we broke back into the top half of the Bollinger Band. Um, significantly big can not as big as the down candle but significant another big significant up candle like this one was although it was still engulfed and we broke above the top of the down candle there at 108.50 and then we held that into the 200 hour rejected it moved back down to the 20 hour moved back through that then through the 200 hour this time and now we'll bid again so euro today remains bid ahead of the fed uh, and that data uh, obviously, the data, the uh, surprise from the um, inflation, the core inflation, uh, one tick higher, but the headline out of the Eurozone was lower. With lots and lots of data still to come today. Joseph, can you please? Uh, Langer saying CAD. Let's get to CAD, Langer. I'll get to CAD after I've done this, answer this question uh, from Joseph. Can you please share with us the set in which you place your moving averages? Joseph, okay, this. Um, this particular chart setup, the blue line is the 50-day simple moving average. The gold line is the 200-day simple moving average. If you want to see, I mean, it's very simple to find how to do it. I think is what you're asking. If I set up a new chart, just let's put the time um, to it. This is a new chart, so it always comes out with a black background. I don't like the grid. Um, I don't really want. Um, um, I don't want period separates on. So there we go. So um, the black candles are positive candles. So the black candles are up. The white candles are down. 
Uh, obviously, you've got the wicks on there, so it just looks differently, this one, Joseph. But uh, so if you want to insert there, so what I had on there was moving averages. So I had the 200 simple moving average. So that's the gold line. That's a gold line. Um, insert indicators. So another uh, moving average was the 50, wasn't it? So we make that 50. And uh, it was a, it's a blue line. It doesn't show up very well on the black, but there we go. Uh, we also had the Bollinger Bands on this particular setup. So uh, where's Bollinger Bands gone? Uh, it's trending, isn't it? Bollinger Bands, there we are. Bollinger Bands, default setting, uh, 22. Oh, the red for some reason. <laughs> there we go. That's the default setting, two deviates, two standard deviations. Uh, a 20 period count back. So there's the red, there's the red bond demands on this particular set. So uh, there we go. So again, here on this no, wrong, 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 there we go. There's over the, the 20 period moving average, the midline, and then it broke the 50 period moving average. Du, du, du. So that's that's the setups, uh, Joseph. Does that make sense on that particular, on this particular white setup? Okay. Uh, and then we've just uh, got ATR, the MACD, and the RSI attached to the bottom as well. Does that make sense? They're the moving averages. Um, the ones I use on an intraday basis um, on the different profile on my, you might be talking about this one, uh, the default profile, which you see most often. This one, um, this one, this is uh, the magenta, the, these are different. That's still the 200 uh, moving average gold line uh joseph uh, but these like these ones are different these are shorter time frame uh moving average and there are different types of moving average this is the the 21 exponential moving average so the the the, the others are simple this is the exponential it uses a different uh mathematical formula that the 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 last candles are more significant than the earlier candles with exponential moving average that's a really the only difference so the magenta line is the 21 exponential moving average. The yellow line is the nine period exponential moving average. Okay. And the fast moving moving average I use is the five period moving average. The blue line or the steel blue line is the five period. So we've got the, the blue line is the five EMA. Close. So the blue line here is the, the, and the lower the number, the closer it is to the price action. So some people use eight and three, I use five, nine and 21. Uh, on this particular strategy, you look for a break, uh, the five to cross the nine. So the, the slow crosses the medium. And then when the price, that's a first indicator, that things might be, able, might be uh, moving up now from this downtrend. So, and then the long position would have been taken here on the close of this candle because it's closed over the 21 as well. So at this point, we've got the five, the nine and the 21 in in, in harmony, i.e. They're, they're not crossing. So we go up, we, so this one went long here uh, yesterday at uh, whatever that was, 108 something, and it's been long uh, ever since really it got stopped out I'm not stopped out it closed it perhaps there so not actually very much but then got back in here this morning and it's been long you on this one hour strategy euro went long this morning at six o'clock because uh, again you see they're in harmony so with they're in and then moving higher and there we are 108 35 there's that 10 key 109 level so um, so it depends on the strategy but that the white ones we're using today um, 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 profile, which one we use? We're using the law, this white one because people ask for a white background, that's why I moved away from it, Joseph. Okay, hope that made sense, Joseph. I hope it did. Very good. Uh, gold yesterday, sir. Yeah, gold. Well, what a day. We just looked at gold, but we'll, I'm about to show you again. There we go. Big move down yesterday. It's an end of week, sorry, not end of week, end of month. Uh, machination there, so be careful. But if you, you know, if you were following this, you'd have been generally short anyway. So you'd have got some of the. So you might have been wiped out very. <coughs> sorry, uh, your profits might have been taken away, or most of the profits taken away. And it turned around really quick. It depends how you were trading it. But certainly, it was a big move down into 1900. Uh, even quicker, interestingly, that's what often happens. Even quicker retrace uh, back to the 200 hour up here at uh, 1930 and didn't and this just sort of idling around since so uh, that was gold yesterday uh, Nas, um, uh, sorry Ayanda is asking about the Nas 100 
Uh, we did look at it earlier, but uh, uh, so where's it gone? USA 100. Uh, this is the daily again. Again, it remains um, bid, but it's uh, holding the uh, key 11,900 level here. It's the uh, USA 100. Um, Iander, make sure it's the same asset we're talking about. Um, key 11,900 level has been breached and held, but we've come back to test the key um, uh, 200 day moving average, as we have done many times before. So, look, it's the first time we've broken over it and held it. It was resistance. We didn't get to it here on the rally <coughs> in August. We certainly didn't get to it here on the rally uh, from October to the November, December highs uh, as we went down to 10,700. Uh, but there's that range. See that? That's why the 11,900 level is so key. And obviously, the big psychological number above that is only 100 points above that at 12,000 12, itself. Uh, so can this hold? That's the big question many are asking. Oh, we've had a quite a significant rally, as you can see here from these lows at the end of December, beginning of January. Very, very strong um, January for the NASDAQ. 13% uh, up there, 1% on this particular chart. But, you know, some profits were certainly taken towards the end of the month. You saw that down candle there on the 30, uh, 29, 30th, but we're still holding. So 11,900, key, key support level. Um, <clears throat> going forward, as we look at the, uh, there's that 11,900 level. So we're holding up over that on the four hour. We've been dipped yesterday to support. So it's still ticking high. But again, we need to breach 11,000 or 12,175, which is where the top of the Bollinger Band sits. And our intraday high yesterday, which was turned around really quickly, took us to 11,250. So, uh, yeah, still um Still bid here, uh, but see how small the candles are ahead of the Fed uh, today. Um, but still, I say, still bid, still going up. And the one hour is more volatile. That was yesterday's big decline, decline this morning uh, in the futures. Uh, rally in the, in the cash market. And there was a big rally uh, in the final hour of trading as well yesterday. So that was very positive. And so far today, uh, these futures markets have held in the upper half of the Bollinger Band. Uh, but back to test at the moment. So 12,050 uh, is the bottom of this, the 20 hour moving average. Uh, and yesterday's high took us to 11, 12,100. So, you know, a, a very, very key 50 points. Uh, if that breaks, we're then into this zone here, the bottom of the Bollinger Band and the 50 hour moving average, which sits at 11,986. And then 12,007, so around 12,000 is the support level uh, today. But as I say, be careful uh, what the Fed might uh, deliver later on uh, for the NAS. Um, Derek, we did look at oil, didn't we? Uh, expectation of the Fed. Well, as I say, uh, it's nailed on that uh, they'll move 25 basis points. Really, the statement, what the statement says with regard to their future. Uh, outlook. If you look at the dollar index, which is a measure, remember, of the uh, performance of the dollar against six of its major compatriots, competitors, uh, we, we're really just pivoting through the 102 level um, and have been for a while. Uh, um, there's that 102 level, which can't really break above it and move higher. So, um, sort of sideways action here towards the end of January, knowing what the Fed, the Fed was about to announce. So, um, with, with, again, dollars sort of, uh, ticking. Uh, whoops. Uh, lower, lower overall since this big rally to uh, 115 um, towards the end of um, September. So October, November, December, January we're down. Uh, but still, you know, the dollar index over 100 is still a, is a, still a strong dollar. Obviously, it's cooled very significantly. Uh, and it's way under its 200-day moving average. You see the trend remains to the downside. So will this continue into February? Well, at the moment, uh, there's, you know, that 102 level becomes absolutely key because that's where the 20-day moving average zone is sitting, isn't it? Uh, so dollar is expecting perhaps uh, the or the dollar index is prevent uh, is expecting uh, the Fed to get to its terminal rate, this 5%, uh, relatively soon. Whether it's you know. They would chop today if they went 50 basis points. I can't see that happening, uh, but certainly by the end of March. But the, you know the data continues to to suggest that their action has worked, 
after a lot of delay. So um, one or two resistance, um, uh, and obviously the next level down here on a on this particular chart here, you see the bottom of the Bollinger Band now sits there, that 100 itself. So there you go, 100, massive, massive psychological level uh, for dollar index. So Fed uh, likely to, uh, you know, what I expect is, is, is uh, Powell to remain uh, relatively hawkish. The hawks dominate the Fed, uh, but you might be saying, you know, the, the U.S. market is proving, or the U.S. economy is proving more resilient. Uh, and obviously, <clears throat> the jobs data is still proving very, very tight. Um, but if we have a big cooling in uh, North Farm Perry or even ADP today, it's too late to affect what might say tonight. Uh, but certainly that has an impact rolling forward to March, whether they go with these uh, this next final 25 basis points, the market's still expecting. But uh, We'll see. So we'll see what happens later on tonight. Um, Kiwi. Not many people ask about a Kiwi, Mohammed. Uh, but uh, good to have a look, my friend. Key currency, small economy, small country, uh, but key carry trade um, uh, currency. Uh, talking about you know having to move interest rates quite aggressively. Obviously, the prime minister has just uh, resigned. Uh, just want to take on uh, the uh, next challenges, as she called it. So. Um, uh, very well uh, regarded outside, particularly outside of New Zealand, I think, but very well regarded inside New Zealand as well. Uh, right, some questions coming in on go to webinar. So I'll come back to you guys in a minute. Adrian you know, Godwin, uh, you asked about the Aussie Godwin, but you seem, looks like you've gone. Um, out, out arrow, Bob Brown is asking for uh, Yes, the webinar will, is recorded. You'll get a copy of it uh, if you have to go, Bogani. It looks like you have to go. Uh, what was the purpose of the 21 EMA? Uh, 21 EMA asset like yeah, I use that as it's like, it's like the high speed uh, or the slower moving average, guys. It's a key, key level Langer, uh, the 21 EMA. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. You said you've, uh, you've installed a custom VWAP, which I got for $36. Well, the guy that's selling you it probably well, that's all he wanted was a $36. But it's not accepting changes to its properties. What should I do? I don't know. Contact your. It's not something you've got from us, my friend. So I don't know. So contact your the guy you got it from or the person you got it from. Um, uh, it might only. It might. It might. It probably should be able to change the settings. Um, but you know, it was probably more interested in your thirty-six dollars. Um, to be honest, my friend. But very best of luck. VWAP. I like VWAP. It's a great, uh, great tool. And I think uh, Otto did a webinar on it, didn't it, um, uh, not so long ago. Anyway, uh, back to Kiwi for uh, Mohammed. Sorry, Mohammed, thank you for your patience. Um, as you can see, this is the, no, let's go to the daily. Uh, as you can see, as with all dollar, or most dollar crosses now, that uh, it's bid against the US dollar. So some key levels there. We couldn't get to 65 or hold 65 in January. Uh, our pivot point is through this, six, is now higher, this 63. Uh, uh, was that 63.85 is now um, at higher at 64. So 64 is our support where the 20 day moving average is. The 50 day is there at 63.60, and then the bottom of the Bollinger Band 62.80. Uh, but still bid, as you can see here, it's quite nicely demonstrated from the MACD. Uh, the difference between the moving average is sort of is, is cooling, so it's a bit of a consolidation. So if Kiwi it's going to go higher against if this pair is going to go higher it really needs to break 65 if it's going to go lower it needs to break this uh firstly not this line here now let me um the 63 85 area i suppose that's quite a good line because it's between the 20 day and the 50 day but really you know the 20 day is at 64 17 so under 64 to go lower uh but really the 50 day is at 63 85 and then that level there, 62.85. So they're the support levels. Um, the resistance is the big 65. And then above that, the Bollinger Band is stretched higher. The Bollinger Band volatility, two-day volatility, takes to 65.50 to the upside. Okay. I don't know what time frame you're trading that, uh, Mohammed, uh, but that's the daily. The four-hour uh, also showing that consolidation, of the resistance at 65 uh, and to the downside. Um, um, in the last couple of days, uh, yeah, downside. And there's that 63.85, where the 200 period moving in average is uh, for the four-hour traders. Uh, and intraday today, uh, as as buy seem lower, isn't it? Uh, dollars picked up a bit. 
uh, yesterday. Uh, couldn't get over the 200 hour. Uh, 50 hour is the res next resistance. We're sort of playing with the 20 hour. Now we moved lower. So yeah, we again that's a bit more, uh, a bit more action, a bit more direct. So today resistance sits at 64.50. Oh, again, it's the same number, isn't it? 64.60 and the 200 hour uh, 64.75. Um, so that's the upside targets. The support is we've just gone over it at the moment, uh, 64.40, uh, and then the low of the day sits at the bottom of the Bollinger Band there at 64. Uh, 20 and low of yesterday took us back to 64.10 and then 64 itself. And again, uh, the MACD sort of sideways um, here on the one hour time frame under the zero line, still the signal line, but moving up, flattening out, and then sort of moving up RSI 50 neutral, not a lot going on. Um, but there's the, there's the levels to break to the upside. There's your support. There's your next support for Kiwi today. Uh, and Danny, we had a look at, no, I'm getting you, obviously you put this up um, uh, a couple of times. Um, gold, let's have another look at gold. Um, uh, uh, Paul's been hanging around for a while, no doubt. Uh, daily, as I said earlier, uh, there's the resistance, 1950. Support is 1920 on a higher time frame. Then uh, 1900 itself, the big, this dotted line here. Then 1850 and then 1800. Uh, intraday or four hour, uh, there's our 1950 uh, level, there's our daily support at 1920 and there's the 1900 level which we spiked into yesterday, really aggressive. And then yesterday was this big shakeout for the end of the month, couldn't break over the 20, 200 for any length of time, 200 day, came down, went sideways, not much action. And we've been up the last three hours so gold remains uh, sort of relatively bid, you would argue, ahead of the Fed. Um, intraday today, so there's our key support levels 1920, uh, 50 uh, hour moving average at 1923, uh, the, the lower Bollinger Band at 1924, uh, the 20 hour moving average at 1927.25, and the 200 hour, which we're over at the moment, is the key 1929 level. So 1929, can we hold it uh, for the rest of the day? Gold sort of ticking higher um, uh, currently. Uh, dollar we just looked at. Do you mean Euro Popaz? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Mind. Joseph says thank you. That's not a problem. And Joseph also says oh, there we go. It's not a problem. Thank you. Right. Let me just go back to um, um, oh, my friends over on uh, Go to Webinar. Excuse me. Uh, Langers has some dollar CAD. That's the only one we've missed. I think dollar CAD and the Aussie. Um, uh, is Godwin still here? No, but I'm here. That's about the Aussie. Uh, sure somebody asked about the Aussie dollar. Am I going mad? Yes, it's Godwin, but he's gone. But we'll uh, we'll do it anyway because he watches the recording. Uh, so long as that's about dollar CAD. Again, you obviously all subject to what might happen this afternoon. Uh, dollar CAD here on the daily uh, zoom up um, remains sort of ticking lower uh, for January. Uh, January and December, we couldn't break uh, the highs uh, that we'd, uh, put, uh, we'd uh, put in place in December at uh, 137. There we go, it's just a few, there's 137. So we couldn't get over 137. Uh, uh, but in uh, December, we couldn't break 134, but we have done that in the second half of January. So we're moving lower. So the support comes in now, the next one down, which is 133, which is where we are um, currently. So uh, the daily remains in a downtrend and has been under the 20-day moving average since the beginning of January. Uh, and it's been under the 50-day moving average for a similar length of time. Back to test it here, uh, the middle of January. And then uh, we rejected it and moved down. So the trend, the daily is down. Uh, to uh, test the 133 level, and we're actually under 133, 132.99. Remember, uh, the Bank of Canada uh, signaled that they've, they're, they're pausing their rate hike, so that should have weakened um, the uh, CAD, which it did initially. That's what this rally was here uh, in the middle of the month. Uh, but since then, we've moved down, uh, perhaps the, the anticipation of uh, the Fed doing the same. Um, and, and the fact that they, 
the Canadians are talking about possible raising rates, actually, uh, sorry, cutting rates before the end of the year. That's, that's very, very questionable whether they, uh, very, very questionable whether the, um, uh, the the Fed will do that. Mohammed, I've just seen your comment there about um, your, well, so uh, Mohammed, I'll go back to the Kiwi in a minute, okay? I've seen your comment, it's four hour, one hour and 15 minutes, certainly. I'll go back to that for you in a minute, okay? Um, let me just finish this for um, um, uh, for Langer. Uh, so that's the daily trend is down. The four hour trend is uh, more choppy, but still down. Uh, see, there's lots of volatility. There's a, there's a big resistance there, uh, 134.80. Uh, top of the Bollinger Band, uh, 134.26. You get this story, guys, don't you? There's 50, 133.62, and there's the key. 20 period at 133.40. Uh, much see the top here, much more action going on, on the four hour there. There's that 134 level. There's our 133 level, which uh, we're breaking at the moment. So again, four hour down and the one hour much more volatility. Uh, yesterday, a crazy, crazy day, uh, last two days, but we're back to this level more importantly. So you're back to this 133. Lots of pips on offer if you're trending this higher. Uh, then you know, actually, actually, there wasn't there, was it? Because it ran right into that 20 hour uh, before it breached, and it was the following hours really, really a uh, huge candle down after break the 200 hour and the 50 hour as well. Um, but again, these are nice, these are our line. We've got the 200, the 50, and the 20. Much volatility there, so lots of pips on offer yesterday, uh, but we're still biased to the downside. Uh, for dollar cad at under uh, 133 as i speak or just around 133 as i speak as i say the daily time frame remains very much uh, down and 134 needs to break if it's going to go higher support coming up here at that 132.08 uh, level the 200 hours so 132 is a support on an end of day basis okay um uh Mohammed's asking about Kiwi. Uh, Mohammed was asking about uh, the Kiwi, and these were the time frames. So this makes it easier for us to have a look at. So let's have a look at those time frames for you. Uh, there's a Kiwi. So uh, the first one, um, Mohammed's interested, is the four hour. Remember, this is Fed day, so be careful. So the four hour uh, remains uh, short. It's under its 20 um, uh, period moving average. The, so the, the resistance here for the Kiwi is at dot 64.64. Nice round numbers. 64.65. That's your, uh, your your resistance. Above that is 64.70. So only five pips. And then the big round 65 is obviously the the levels to the upside. The low, uh, interestingly, the low has been put in yesterday at 64.12, uh, which is around about the bottom of the Bollinger Band there. 64. Well, call it call it. Call it 64.15, the split difference between the spike, that spike there and the Bollinger Band there at 64. So call it around about 64.15 is the low zone. And we're sort of halfway between the two, aren't we, at the moment? So uh, it still buys lower for four hours. So a trend is down for four hours. Your one hour, so you want to be looking to take short trades because the four hours down. The one hour is also a bit choppier, but your resistance now is the 50, not the 20. So we ran up to the 50. And down yesterday there's so your resistance on the for the one hour is that 64 uh, 50 level uh, the 20 hour the 20 hour moving average at 64 40 uh, and the low uh, today has been the bottom of the bondage man there at 64 15 so again another one uh, sort of trundling sideways now uh, and the 15 minute if that's your trading time frame um, short 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 went long this morning went short but had support so the 15 period has got support here at that that uh, 50 period moving average so 64.365 is your support um <clears throat> then it sits at 64.42 and then the resistance is the well firstly it's that the these highs which coincide with the top of the bollinger band at 64 whoops at 64.46 Something it was, wasn't it? 64, uh, 49, 60, 60, so again, 64, 50 really in round terms. Okay. And then the 200 hour there, 64, uh, 54 um, to the upside. So really the 15 minute is really about sort of channel bound here. 
uh, can't really get over uh, 64.48 and certainly can't get over 64.50 or 64.50 is above there, just there. So, uh, so it's, but the big support is held uh, so far today. Um, save that spike through it. I stopped you out if you were, I don't know whether you were short or you know, turned around, but uh, there's the support. There's the support zone here on the 15 minutes. So um, let's recoup. So uh, for your time frames, four hour remains um, short, one hour uh, sort of short, but you know, the 50 hour is there and 15 minute uh, is, I think it's ticked high. It's really channel, not really moving. Sign Bollinger Bands aside, it's not moving higher. It's sort of, um, you know, shorts are being applied when it gets to this sort of 64, 48 area, uh, even before that at the moment. Uh, but uh, we'll see. Uh, but support uh, intraday today, there, that's 64, 36 uh, for you. Okay. Uh, Mohammed, I hope that's answered your question. Um, thanks for that. That's no problem. Derek, oh, WTI man, how do I configure my Fibonacci settings? Um, I don't know what you mean by that, um, uh, Derek. Well, let me, uh, right. Um, the thing with Fibonacci, let's start with the symbols, which is retracement, okay? Uh, and you, the, let me, oh, hang on, escape. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, uh, I'll get rid of that. Okay, delete. The thing about Fibonacci, gentlemen, ladies, uh, traders, is that you need the, the trend to have ended, uh, and you know, depending on the time frame that you're trading, but you obviously the higher the time frame, the more significant it is. Uh, but clearly, here there was an up leg there, and clearly, there was a down leg there. So, the last Fibonacci movement on this particular time frame, the 15 minute time frame, took us from the 200 hour moving average all the way down to the bottom of the Bollinger Band. So, if you were using um, yesterday's range, which is basically what I've just sort of plugged in there, haven't I? That's yesterday's range. So, interestingly, see, you can see here on the 15 minute time frame, we've just been looking at the Kiwi. That 61 Fibonacci level has provided part of the resistance level. So we've got the 61 Fibonacci on the 15 minute time frame from yesterday's high to low, from the last leg low uh, is the resistance. Also coinciding with the top of the Bollinger Bar, which is also key. So there's those key levels. I don't know what you mean by configure it, uh, Derek, but that's the default. Okay. Some, um, some software um, adds an extra level here around about the 70. Um, level, uh, but these are the key Fibonacci levels: the 61 and the 50. The 50, the 50 isn't actually a Fibonacci level; it's been added for the financial markets, but it's proved very, very key. Um, uh, but these are the three key levels: the 61, the 50, and the 38.2. As you can see uh, from this big decline from yesterday to the, today's low, uh, that's where we've been trading. That's the range it's been trading, hasn't it? It hasn't really got under the 38 since it broke over it, but it hasn't got over the 61. So that's the range as well. So, but as I said, our, our moving averages there coincide with these Fibonacci levels as well. Um, but I don't know what quite you mean by Fibonacci um, uh, settings, Derek. But Derek, let me show you. If we go to a different level, that, that Fibonacci level is somewhat, well, it actually coincides because it's high to low. So it's still relevant there on that four hour level, but you can't plot your Fibonacci level until the trend is over and it's difficult to say that oh i'm getting tired now sorry uh -huh. object list get rid of that 15 close okay oh i want to delete it not just close it there we are so here on the four hour time frame there isn't you know we can't really say uh that that trend is over I mean, you, I mean, you could because we yeah, it's a bit of an art, but you know, you could have tentatively put that in uh, as your four hour Fibonacci levels. Uh, so the higher the time frame, the more significant it is because um, that 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 leg down is sort of you'd argue after one, two, three, four, five, six, seven candles, it's probably over, isn't it? We've we've bounced, you know, we've bounced as high as we say the 61.8 in, in an intraday. So these is probably still so now. You know, uh, the four hour trader might be thinking, well, right, so this candle that uh, has still got an hour and a half to run needs to break this key level. If it doesn't, you know, we might be moving back down here. So, but next target to the upside might be the 
the 50% level, which takes us to 64, and then before these moving averages come in. So, but again, can you see how the moving averages uh, coincide, or the Fibonacci levels coincide with the, with the uh, moving average levels, which I like. Why I like Fibonacci uh, very much. So, uh, very much, uh, in fact. Uh, but I so say the key thing is that you can't plot it, you can't retrace until the trend is over. Too many people jump in too early. Uh, and even on this leg down here for a Kiwi on the four hour, it may be too early. Uh, but the higher the time frame, the more significant it is. So, for instance, if we go to another time frame, is this big leg up? Is it over? We don't know. But it's ran into it for a while, isn't it? So, our higher time frame, big Fibonacci level, you know, the big one from the low to the high is there. You know, that's a, so that's a different scale altogether, isn't it? You know, the 61 retrace of this big rally from the October low to what is currently the January high. We don't really know that that's what the 65 levels in is in. It will take us all the way back down here to under 59. Uh, you know, down here, there, there it is, 58, 85. So it's a long, long way from where we are at the moment, isn't it? So, um, but uh, yeah. There we go. Even you know, even on that daily time frame, you see that the 23 sort of coincides with the bottom of the bond trend there as well. Uh, I don't know if that, uh, Derek, watch our, we got lots of Fibonacci webinars. Watch our webinars uh, for more on that. But that's the simplest way of applying the Fibonacci retracement. But there's lots of other ways. There's lots of other um, um, uh, ways of trading with the uh, with the um fibonacci level right i'm gonna go because there's no more questions uh and i've been on over an hour and a half and i'm really tired now i'm really top past two here i'm any lunch so take care everyone i hope you're well uh and stay safe uh, if there's no more questions i'm gonna wrap it up and uh thank you for your time so um take care stay safe and um we'll see you all again next time all the best everyone bye, -bye.